the name of my show and more like event is Chalk It Up 2023. Uh, I did a documentary covering the annual Needham High School event and I interviewed some students about their experience with it. And I didn't really choose this documentary. I had an original idea to do a documentary based on the Boston College women's basketball team. But uh, I had to change plans kind of like all of a sudden and I think it worked out and I like my new topic. The most challenging part about making the documentary was probably um, finding the time to do the interviews and coming up with good questions that would cover um, the Chalk It Up event because I, I didn't know much about it so coming up with questions about it was a little difficult. And the most rewarding part was being able to pivot so fast and switch directions and still come out with a documentary that I'm proud of. I want them to walk away feeling inspired to create art and maybe go out on their own and try some art out because Art, I feel like a lot of times is abandoned when people are young, like people kind of fall out of love with art and I want people to maybe be inspired to pick it back up and try art again. In Paris, they have the Louvre. In Boston, they have the Museum of Fine Arts. However, in Needham, there is an annual event where senior high school students get to be graded for playing with chalk. It is a monumental event for the students that go through the art program and take those um, high level sequence courses. So it's really exciting. Um, and the students that are involved are really um, kind of thrilled to finally be at that stage. So um, I think I'm always surprised by how like heartwarming it is and how much the community gets involved. And I forget how much like it means to the students. So it's it's actually a really lovely experience. It's stressful because the students don't usually work in public like that. Um, and to get them to that point um, and not know how it's gonna turn out until the day of the event, it can be a little bit um, nerve wracking, but it's really special. So I made a, a movie, it's not a documentary, and it's called Rainbow Trout, which I decided to make because I've always wanted to make uh, a, an actual film that I have creative control over and I, I really am into fishing and so I thought making a movie about fishing would be very exciting. The hardest part for me was to get everyone together because I had like 13 actors in my show and it was tough to get all their schedules to uh, meet at the same time so I had a lot of trouble with getting everyone together but luckily I was able to do it in just two, two shooting days. So that um, made it come out well. Right after editing everything, it came out um, almost how I wanted it to. And um, just being able to watch it over and over um, is really rewarding for me. The message of my film is that um, competition and greed are, are not the right way to do business or to live your life. Um, the characters in my film um, are very competitive. There's two competing fish restaurants which take advantage of each other and this kind of shows how um, those things end up um, leading to their downfall. Reef and Grilled Fish is the best thing I've ever had! Come! This fish could save our restaurant. Yeah, we need to catch more! We get away with this. We need to do something. I was thinking, we break in and we poison their fish. That way, when they get shut down, we'll be the only restaurant in town again. I like it. Let's do it. 
The fish has to be over there. That's the only way they could have known about it. All right, let's do it. It's locked. Do you have your lockpick set? Of course. We got to find that fish. Got it. Something's coming. What the? That was close. So our show is called Pursuing Pages, and we chose to do it because we both bonded over books when we became friends, and we thought of going to bookstores together, and it just kind of, the ideas came. The most challenging part was um, that a lot of things went wrong during filming. Uh, sometimes we didn't have what we needed, and then also editing was really challenging because of the time constraint, and then we were also still kind of getting used to using Final Cut, and uh, the stress was kind of uh, weighing on us. And then the most rewarding part is probably just the finished product because I feel like it's, at least for me, I think it's one of the best things that I've ever had a hand in creating. Yeah. And it also makes me excited for the future since this is something that I want to pursue. Um, I want people to walk away from this show uh, knowing more about bookstores and the work that goes into them, the people behind it. Uh, how the bookstore owners really strive to create a community and also just more about bookstores in the area and like why it's good to visit. It's definitely yeah. fun to work together <laughs> on this project because we've known each other for almost 11 years and you know it's always fun doing anything together really yeah and I feel like we just we in general are good together and um, I think working Doing the same project with someone that I'm not super comfortable with would have been a hundred times more difficult because mm -hmm. I feel like we are able to communicate in a way that um, problem solving is very, it's a lot easier and we both have similar preferences and um, we both understand each other well. So I think that that's, that was helpful in working with each other. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. Like, it was just comfortable and easy because we know each other so well. And also because we're so similar, like, working on a project that we both were very invested in. And we also, we both want to go into basically the same thing in the future. So it was just, it made it really easy and fun. So The Book Rack is an independent bookstore that sells used and new books. And it has a very homey atmosphere to it. So at the Book Rack, they sell more than just books. They have trinkets like bookmarks and also uh, mugs and more. Another gem about the Book Rack is that um, they sell original versions of books. So let's say in the 70s you read something and you really want to read it again but you just can't find the book anywhere and you want an original copy. They have a lot at the book rack and um, you can get this one for like two dollars. So they're very cheap and very um, easily accessible. And the database can help you find these books as well. So the book rack is also a place where you can give books to and then they can sell them to people who um, will read the books. So if you have books from your childhood that you aren't going to read anymore or you have kids books that um, your kids have grown out of, you can give them to the book rack and they will sell them to someone who will love the books just as much as they were loved at your home. So one really amazing thing about the book rack is they don't just have books that were recently released, but they have books from my childhood and um, from the owner's childhood. So no matter what age you are, 
um, you can find something that's perfect for you, something that's nostalgic. Um, like this section behind me uh, includes a lot of books that I loved as a child or that I really wanted to read as a kid and it's um, it's a really good feeling to see them here because I just haven't seen them since I was in elementary school. So a pet peeve of mine is when I really like the original cover of a new book but then they re release it with the new cover but at the book rack they have the original covers and the newer cover. So that was the book rack. You can visit it at 13 Medford Street in Arlington. And thank you for pursuing pages with us. The name of my documentary is It's Not Rocket Science, and I chose that topic because it is something that I've put a lot of time into, which is the Rocket Club and all those people in there. And it's a very interesting thing in my life that is going away, and I want people to know that it happened. Um, well, it was kind of taking what I had in terms of footage and the story that I knew was in my head and somehow on my phone and kind of translating that into something that somebody who has no idea what's happening could understand um, and making sure that anybody with any breadth of knowledge or ability can watch this documentary and come away with hopefully a good feeling or more information that they didn't have before. I really liked putting the music behind all the tracks and kind of designing the um, video to sync up with the music and making it feel exciting and interesting. And like that final moment where you put all this stuff together and then you get to watch it and it, it's, it's cool. I hope they walk away with the knowledge about the Rocketry Club what happened, why it's interesting, and why the, they should care. Did you know that Needham High has its very own official rocketry club? There's a pretty good chance that you did not. Today I am here to share with you the highs, <laughs> and the lows of the 2022-2023 to 2023 NHS Rocketry Club season, and why this is the most interesting club that is already dead. There might be a problem with the parachute too. Yeah, the parachute. We're gonna launch it. The name of the documentary is Student Spotlight and I chose the topic um, because I was in a play called Radium Girls and that's what the documentary is about, is about going behind the scenes of the play and seeing how it's actually produced and the various components that go in that process. The most challenging part I'd say was just being able to um, interview people um, since um, it was really busy um, doing the rehearsals. Um, and also it was um, finding um, b-roll. The most rewarding part I'd say of the project is definitely just seeing um, the final outcome just like all of it put together at the end. I want people to be like wow you know like I had like no idea like how much went into it and, like we just see like an hour and a half play but you know it's a month of work and it's a lot of work um, and people don't appreciate that sometimes. Mm -hmm.